The last thing that's from 4.2, which actually we use more of in the next section, but they do introduce it here in this section. Um, it's called the identity matrix. It's a very special type of square matrix. Right, it's a square matrix. We're actually, when we did the Gauss-Jordan reduction, we kind of saw it in the Gauss-Jordan reduction. <coughs> Excuse me. It's the one for matrices. Right, and where it comes out is, it's the matrix where you have a diagonal of ones and zeros everywhere else. And so the way we list it is we write I sub n, right? which it's I is a square matrix that's an n by n. It has n rows by n columns. Right? So if I have an I sub 2, that means it's an identity 2 by 2. And so I've got ones along the diagonal, zero everywhere else. That's what we mean by, there's my identity matrix. And so I sub three would be a identity three by three. And so again, it would have the diagonal of ones and zero everywhere else. All right, that's what we mean by that. Again, if you remember the Gauss-Jordan, this got us down to the row reduced form, right? Except then we had the second column, which were the one represented one X, one Y, and one Z. And that's what the identity matrix is. It represents one, a one unit. So I sub four would work the same way. It would be a four by four with ones along the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And again, you could go as big as you want. I sub N would give you N rows and N columns where you've got N ones down the diagonal. And what the identity matrix is, it, it represents, so this, the identity matrix I has the following property. Provided that the product is defined, we can do the math, right? The math is defined, the matrix dimensions work. It's the one for me, it works the same way as one does, right? If I take one times five or five times one, I get five back out. Well, the identity matrix works in the same way. If A, is an n by n matrix. If I take i sub n times a, which is an n by n, or a times i sub n, I can do the math because the n's match up, and I will get my a back out. The identity matrix works the same way as one. It gives me, it's the one for matrices. That's what the identity is, it's the one for matrices. And so we're gonna test that out. I'm gonna show you in the next example. All right, so I've got my identity two, there's my I two two matrix, and my C, which is also a two by two. I'm gonna find C times I and I times C. All right, so I'm gonna go here and take C times I sub two. And so my matrix C was five, negative three, one, negative six. I is my one, zero, zero, one. I can do the math, right? It's a two by two times a two by two, the matrix match and so I can actually do the math. I've got two rows and two columns to multiply by. All right, row one, row two, column one, column two. And so when I do the math, when I take row one by column one, I get five times one, which is five plus zero times three, so five plus zero. Right now, row one by column two. So five times zero, which is zero, plus negative three times one, so negative three. Now, my row two times each of my columns. So one times one, which is one, plus zero. And then zero plus the negative six. If I simplify that out, I get five, one, negative three, negative six, which that's C, right? It gives me back my C. Well, it does the exact same thing if I do it work in the other direction. All right, so when I took I sub two, oops, when I took C times I sub two, I got C back out. Well, check it in the other direction. It should also work in the other direction. If I multiply I times C, I should get C back out, should give me C. And we'll check that it does, right? Row one times column one, well I get five plus zero, so that leaves me with five. Row one times column two, I get negative three plus zero, 
That gives me negative 3. Now I'm row 2. 0 times 5 plus 1 gives me 1. 0 times negative 3 is 0 plus negative 6. And there is my c back again. And so it's unique. This is the unique function where I can multiply both sides of it and I get the same thing back out. Right? It's, it's the i is the 1 for matrices. And it's unique to the i. Now, you have to know this premise. So long as the product is defined, and I'm going to talk about that in my next example. My next example is kind of going to go over that last line. All right, so I've got my matrix B here, which my matrix B is a 3 by 2. Right? I've got three rows and two columns. And so all I'm asking is, can I do the math? Right? Are the following products defined? So the first one is B times I sub 2. Well, B is a 3 by 2. I sub 2 is a 2 by 2. Check. So yes, if I do the math, I'm going to get B back out. Well, what about the other way around? I sub 2 times B. Well, I sub 2 is a 2 by 2. B is a 3 by 2. And so this time, they don't match up. When I flip it around, I would have three numbers in each of my columns from B, but my matrix I would only have two numbers in each of their rows. And so I run out of digits. And so in this case, it's undefined. I don't have a big enough identity matrix. What I have to do when I multiply on this side of B, I have to multiply by an identity matrix that's the same. So basically, I have to match these numbers, right? If I'm on the left side, I have to have an identity 3. If I'm on the right side, I have to have an identity 2. All right, so I want to make it a little bigger. I3, which makes it a 3 by 3 identity times my matrix B, which is a 3 by 2. Now it checks, and now it'll give me out my B matrix. So again, I have to, I will give me my, will work on either side of my B, will still multiply out and give me B, but I have to make sure the math is still defined. I still have to make sure the dimensions match so that I have enough numbers in my column, right? My I3 is a 0010, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, my matrix B was negative 2, 1, 0, 3, negative 7, 3. All right, I had to have this bigger matrix because there are three numbers in this row. I had to multiply by three numbers in that column. If I only had a 2 by 2 matrix, I would run out of numbers and it wouldn't work. All right, so I had to make it bigger on that side. All right, that finishes up. We only have one more section left to go for the entire semester. Right, which is actually a simple section, 4.3, and then we're all done with all the topics.